Hey there, Wargamers, Justin Aaron Painter here, and you guys are tuning in for my wrap-up video where I reflect back on the Painting Mephiston tutorial series. I'd like to welcome you guys back today. Thank you for tuning in. If you're watching this, then either you stumbled across it, which is unlikely, or you have just finished my Painting Mephiston tutorial series, and whew, oh, it's so good to be done. Uh, at this point, as I'm filming this, I still have uh, nine, nine videos to edit, including this one. So I guess technically 10, but nine tutorial segments from this series to edit. And uh, the hard part's done, the easy part's ahead of me, but it's still going to be time consuming. So a uh, big thank you to you guys who have allowed this to happen. Thank you for everyone who has hung out to, during my streams to help motivate me in, in regards to what I do. Thank you for everyone who has helped support me in every way possible to push this content forward. Just a big thanks. I appreciate it. I do want to talk for a moment today, though, about my experience thus far on painting Mephiston. Uh, so first and foremost, this um, this tutorial filming style that I've gone with was suggested by um, uh, Nomadic Chris from Twitch, uh, Chris from Facebook and the Garrison. Um, he thought that breaking the video into segments would be a good idea. So I've tried something new. So one of the suggestions from the community incarnate has been has been attempted and we'll see how it goes um, I will say that it's it's taken a lot longer to to film than I thought it would doing it that way the editing is probably gonna take some time too but it will be easier for you guys to consume uh, the unfortunate side effect is I didn't meet the January deadline the the, the idea was for me to do a tutorial every month we missed J January by a long shot uh, by the time this goes starts going up these are pro probably started in February sometime uh, but the miniature's done, it's in multi-segment uh, uh, um, parts, so you guys can, can see different techniques and learn as you go, which I think is good. Um, but I'm not sure how I'm going to move forward with forward forward with tutorials. Um, I like this format, but if I do something this detailed every month, there's no way I'm going to finish in time. Um, so I'm thinking about separating high detail pieces like this. Um, and doing and sprinkling in some tutorials that are easy to do so I can actually stay up to date with the once a month tutorial and save stuff like this for special occasions or um, bigger goals. This was a lot of effort, um, a, a, a lot of effort and it, whew, it killed me. Uh, I've had some long days, long nights thus far and still more ahead of me obviously in, in regards to uh, working on the miniature, or not miniature, working on the, the editing for the, the, the footage. Um, Hopefully this is, has been a boon, boom, boon, uh, hopefully a boost in some degree for uh, the community as well as the, the YouTube. We are approaching 800 followers as of this video, which for me is, is huge. We're a small channel, but that's huge. Um, if we hit the 1000 mark, I'll be able to monetize my videos. Not that we're going to make a lot off of it, but every little bit does help. Um, you know, so sponsorships from the, um, the miniatures and paint community out there, um, you know, contributions on Twitch, Patreon, all of those things, they really do help and being able to monetize videos on YouTube would be good too. So hopefully this has been helpful in some way. And if you're watching this at this point and you haven't already, I encourage you to subscribe. Now, in terms of challenges for me during this, this painting, uh, process, uh, Finding the time has been difficult. Trying the techniques for the first time in a tutorial format has been eye-opening and honestly scared the shit out of me. Uh, it's it's been rough. Um, I will say as a an honest suggestion to you guys in terms of something you can do and, and take away from this, not only from the techniques, but something I would highly recommend you consider, it's getting one of these. Maybe it's fun with it. Maybe it's a hair dryer. Yeah, uh, this has been a, a lifesaver. Um, if I had to wait on all that paint to dry naturally, holy crap, probably still be painting, probably still be on segment number four. <laughs> Maybe not quite that bad, but you know what I mean. Um, having this handy has allowed me to speed up the drying process, speed up the, the drying process, process of the washes, even the basing. It's just been a godsend. So having a basic hair dryer at your station is going to speed up your painting process in particular when you're working with a single model high detail piece where you want to keep working for a long duration during a session. Um, if you're working on bulk models, it's probably not as necessary because if you're painting like 10 Space Marines, as you uh, apply a wash to one, you're moving on to number two, number three, number four, number five, and so on. Uh, that sounded like I was rapid. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. <laughs> uh, but uh, the point is, by the time you get to the 10th Marine, the first one's probably dry, and then you can go on to the next process and assembly line it. But when you're focusing, like, laser focus on one mini and all that effort's going into one mini at one time, 
you end up waiting on paint to dry quite a bit. So uh, playing around with a hairdryer to speed up the, the drying process of a miniature is pretty helpful. And that's one thing I've definitely gotten from uh, this particular series that I've worked on. I've used it before, but um, this really brings into focus how useful that actually is. And I want to pass that knowledge off to you guys and, and really encourage you to try that out. In addition to that, there's been some learning processes on my part, and I'd like to actually talk about those while I showcase the model here. I don't have any cool photos at this point, so it's just going to be me showcasing the model like I do during a tutorial. But I want to show you guys where we, where I got to it and talk about the trials and tribulations, things that I've went through on it, and uh, I think it'd be pretty cool. So let's go ahead and uh, rotate over, and I'll uh, showcase Mephiston for you and let you see what I've done and uh, share with you all the things about Mephiston, the librarian, guardian of knowledge. So let's ramble over here. Whoop. All right, so here is Mephiston. Let's just give him a quick little rotation here for you guys to see him. Now, the, the first thing that happened when I worked on this that was a big hurdle to get over is uh, video one when I did the, the priming, the masking, and the airbrush work. And then I, I ended the video uh, by washing the model. I absolutely destroyed the saturation when I did that. And that's because I focus a lot on subtlety. Everything I do, I build up transitions and gradients. And when working with the airbrush, you get a lot of that without having to do it by hand. But during my process, I like to wash stuff. I like to build it up by hand. So now I wanted to bring all the colors together and get those dark colors in the recess. And instead of doing that, I just toned the whole thing down. We did get dark recesses, but I really obliterated all that work I did with the airbrush. So that was the first thing that I learned, is trying to rein that in and, and just determine whether I just want to get a, a nice base and transition with the airbrush and intend to come in and build it up by hand, or if I want to go with the contrast of the airbrush and leave it alone. Uh, that's one thing I learned. Now, in the end, I think it worked out because the robes look super good. This is some of the best work I think I've ever done. Um, uh, but that's not what I set out to do, so I did learn that. I also had a lot of fun working on the robes here, or his cloak. I think the transitions and gradients worked really well. If I had to do it again, I think having a, a brighter edge right on this one would have been good, or maybe even darken it up a little bit here, because it seems a little bit bright, but uh, as you lean back and look at it, it, it seems really nice, and that's a really extreme fold, and as it, it is peaking, maybe that one being so much brighter than these is actually good, but in hindsight, I think having it resemble this one a little bit more with that darker gray on the underside might have been good. But this one actually kind of folds down and that one is, is uh, flat up towards the sky. You can see that slight difference. So it made sense to be that bright gray. Um, but this has been a learning experience for me. It's been a lot of fun. Um, doing the freehand down here, that was uh, scary as shit, if I'm honest with you guys. It's not something I'm particularly good at. Um, I'm not 100% happy with it, but for my first attempt at doing serious freehand, I'm very happy with that. In addition to that, I did this freehand on his cloak, and uh, holy crap, I'm really proud of it. It's not the best stuff that I've ever seen, but for my skill set, that looks damn good to me. I don't know what you guys think. Maybe you think it looks like an absolute dumpster fire, but I love it. I think it it very closely resembles the, the subject matter here that I was going for. I was trying to focus on this and have something similar. I think he looks very close. Uh, now this one's a little bit more in the um, kind of, uh, I don't say orange, but brown tan area. Um, this one's a little bit more into the beige and the highlights, but uh, it looks like I was going for non-metallic gold, which I think I achieved. It looks looks pretty clean. Um, I think if I did this 10 more times, I would improve. And I think that's one of the things that's been awesome about this video series so far is I'm trying to show you guys what it is that I do and I'm improving as we go, right? Uh, so one of the other things that I really enjoyed doing was uh, his face. I had a lot of fun working on that. Now, in hindsight, I probably should have used the plasma pistol here so you could see his face, but I wanted the focal point to not be all on this side. I felt like having the pistol out there would have taken away from the model. That was a personal choice. Uh, but in hindsight, you would have been able to see his face better. I spent all that effort on it, now it's covered up. Uh, it's one of my first times trying the, uh, the glow effect in a serious manner. I've done it on, actually, it might be the second time. First time doing glowing eyes, second time doing a glowing effect. First time was on uh, lenses for wheels. Um, I did miss in the, the video when I, or the initial tutorial where I was working on the silver uh, parts, I missed doing it on his temples. So I had to come in off camera later on and fix that. But that's, that's a small portion of, or small, such a small thing that uh, most people can realize that I basically did the same thing. Silver, wash, edge highlighted, no big deal. Um, but that was a lot of fun. It turned out really good. Uh, working with the robes and doing the metallics and trying to force the contrast and not just highlight everything. So you can see like here it's a little bit brighter than right next to it. There's that transition from light gold to the uh, darker gold next to it. Same thing here, that transition from light gold to dark gold in the recess on the edges of the shoulder. Trying things like that. Working with the white was a lot of fun. Uh, it's not something I'm good with, but uh, I think that the effect turned out pretty well. 
and finally probably uh, the second coolest thing on this model. I think the free end is super dope. Probably coolest thing to you guys, but second coolest to me, technical um, effort wise, the lightning on the sword. Uh, normally, if you guys are familiar, you, you watch me and I'll just blast a whole weapon with a glow effect and, and make it look cool. But in this case, I want to be more subtle. Again, I wanted to follow kind of the example they have here and have it a little more subtle. So I came in and we applied a little bit of that, that blue, hit it with some of the white lightning strikes or lightning arcs, hit it with the, uh, the inks from Green Stuff World, then came in with the white and built it back up a little bit. And I think that the subtlety is really nice. It's come together very well. And all in all, if I am honest, uh, this looks better than probably most of my miniatures, and I think this is in my top three I've ever painted. Um, I don't toot my own horn a lot, I try not to, because I try and be humble um, as best as possible, but damn it if I'm not happy with this Blood Angel, bro. Like, my fist on here looks so dope. It gives me hope for how cool, cool uh, um, Azrael is going to be when he comes out for the Dark Angels. I can't wait. But I absolutely love this model, and I'm really hoping that Wheels uh, enjoys it. I hope that it is a cool display piece for him. OP appreciates the effort that I put into this, not only for the tutorial, but because this is a reward for his uh, Patreon pledge over on Patreon. I want him to know that I care. I want him to know that uh, I, I take his contributions as well as all of you guys' contributions, uh, both in the monetary form and just support, seriously. Uh, it's very important to me to put out good content for you and let you know that I, I, I appreciate you supporting me, being behind me. I appreciate all that you do for me and that, you know, I, I take the content creation seriously. I got I want to give back to you. I want to make sure you're you're getting that return on investment. And, and some of you guys, you're just my friends and you view it that way and you want to support what I do and you're not as worried about the content. You just want me to be happy and pursue my interests. But at the end of the day, you, you're here and I paint. That's how we met, most, mo at least with most of you is how I met. So I, I want to make sure I'm giving back to you and doing, doing right by you. So... I poured my heart and soul in this model, and damn it, I love him. He looks super dope. I'd be, I'd be very proud to, to enter this into a contest, but uh, it's it's going to be entered in the mail and sent to Wheels, and hopefully you guys enjoy. Hopefully you've learned something along the way here with me. And uh, as always, I encourage you guys to sign up in the comments below if you have any thoughts, suggestions, critiques, any of those things. I encourage you guys to engage with me. That would be super awesome. I'd love to hear what you have to say. On that note, folks, I don't want to uh, linger too much on Mephiston. I, I've had a blast working on him. Uh, I've learned a lot along the way. Uh, I had to overcome some fear, obviously. Uh, I'm not particularly good with freehand. I, I made it through. It looks looks okay. The freehand on the uh, the cape, on the other hand, real good, I think, uh, for my skill set. Uh, I'm not super good with freehand. I'm not super good with non-metallic metals. And I did freehand with non-metallic metal sort of look. And I think it turned out really nice. Um, as always, though, if you guys have made it to this point in the video, I encourage you to smash that subscribe button for the Wheel of Sanguinius, for Mephiston, for the support. S consider subscribing to the channel. Come on, you know you want to. The Emperor demands it, kind of. I, I guess I guess you can't really take demands from the guy on the Golden Throne who's not technically alive, so uh, I'm not going to demand it, but I'll ask nicely. Would you like to subscribe to my channel? <laughs> uh, if, uh, if you haven't already, I encourage you to like this video and drop a comment below. If you have any thoughts, critiques, suggestions, anything at all, I'd love to engage with you in a conversation. So uh, sound off below. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you uh, followed this tutorial series thus far and you finally finished a mini miniature of your own, maybe your own Mephiston or have used uh, some of these techniques on some of your own stuff, drop some, some links in the uh, description below, or not description, in the, uh, the comments below. Let us see your Instagram. Uh, if you haven't already, I encourage you to uh, check out our Discord and Facebook communities where you can engage with us when I'm not live or uh, when I'm I'm not putting up content here on YouTube, you can still engage with me and other artists and gamers as well. If you'd like to help support the channel, I encourage you guys to check out DeathRedesigns.com. Coupon code to get amped to 10 will save you 10%. A portion of that will come back to me in the form of a bonus check, which will allow me to continue to poo to uh, produce video continue to poo, continue to uh, produce videos like this, continue to stream, and uh, ultimately allow me to pick up more models, more paints, more tools, and things like that that I get to use during live streams, during these videos, as well as on the tabletop. If you're interested in becoming a super supporter, I encourage you to check out my Patreon page. Your contributions, however large or small, really do have an impact on me being able to continue to produce content, which I love to do. I want to continue to do this. I'm, I'm pursuing this hobby interest, this love, this passion. I'm trying so hard, and you guys who have supported me so far, I don't want to let you down, and I really do appreciate it, and hopefully that comes across as genuine and sincere, because... I really is. You guys are important to me. Hopefully I'm important to you and I really appreciate your support. So if you're not a member of the, uh, the, the super supporters over on Patreon, make sure you check that out. We've got a variety of tiers, uh, both small, and large, everything in between with some cool rewards to give back to you for uh, helping me to uh, pursue this, this goal, this, this life, this hobby, this interest, this career that I'm interested in. On that note, folks, we're going to go ahead and sign off today. I've had a blast working on my fist on. Hope you've enjoyed this so far. Hope you've enjoyed listening to me babble, but it's time to go. So as always, keep painting those models, keep rolling those dice, and I'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.